Today, I'm gonna to show you the easiest and most efficient way to get any dog with a lot of energy to just be good. I'm Zach George. I train dogs. This is my new dog, and I'm gonna show you how I train her from day one. Things definitely won't always go smoothly. You can start from the beginning, or you can pick up anywhere. Subscribe and hit the bell notification so you never miss an episode. When you put into motion an approach based on love and respect, your results will forever remain in motion. This is Inertia. Welcome to the Dog Training Experience. I will tell you this though, the easiest and most efficient way to feed your dog is to make sure their food is always there. Wouldn't it be great if you could just choose your dog's food one time and just tell the universe how often you want the food to be there? You can, just go to PetFlow and enter code ZAK30 when you check out. And to make sure you love getting your pet's food from PetFlow, they're gonna give you $10 off your first three automatic shipments. I'll have that link below. You know, it seems that most behaviors we don't like, like hyperactivity, barking and jumping, or just generally not listening, stem from a dog not having enough of a release for all of that energy. But what if there was a way to quickly and concisely get all of that energy out of your dog and make them behave almost instantly like perfect pets? There is. Well, kind of anyway. You guys have been watching me over the last year, trying to train Inertia to play a nice fluid game of fetch with me, basically ever since I brought her home at eight weeks old. It definitely has not gone smoothly the entire time. But we've made a lot of progress and I wanna show you how she's doing and why it really matters. Since I'm going to ask Inertia to do some rigorous exercise in a second, I first wanna get her warmed up. I don't wanna just encourage her to go straight into a sprint. Sit pretty is really good because it stretches out that spinal cord really gets her a little warmed up. Take a bow is another good trick. Look at her, you can actually see her stretching right there. I love it, good girl. Weaving through the legs, a way to get her moving, nice and agile, there you go, good. Lie down, come around, get it. By having her stand on her hind legs, that really gets her hind legs warmed up as well. So doing tricks like this can really just get your dog warmed up to decrease the chances of any unnecessary injuries. Now, if your dog doesn't know tricks like this yet, that's okay. You can probably get them warmed up with a walk or even an off-leash hike before you do some serious exercise with them. The thing is, if you've got a dog with a lot of energy, you're actually trying to give them a satisfying round of exercise. So by teaching them a super fluid game of fetch, you're gonna get the most bang for your buck. I mean, the idea is to get your dog to run in a straight line after the object that you're throwing. Today, I'm using a Frisbee. Immediately after they get the item, you want them coming back to you in a straight line. You want them letting go and eagerly awaiting that next throw. That's how I define a fluid game of fetch. Inertia's focus has been building over time and it's getting really good these days during fetch. And the reason fetch like this is so great is because not only does she get to run and jump and catch something and get all that energy out, but she's also working with a human being like me. And at their core, that's where dogs seem to be the most content when they get to work in harmony with a human being. Dogs have been selectively bred over the years to have so much stamina and so much endurance. This really benefited hunters who were in the field with dogs or helped others manage livestock for hours on end. But you know, now that we don't use dogs in this manner as much, it's so vital that we find ways to satisfy those still present genetics. So the Game of Fetch not only gives your dog a physical way to wrap rapidly dispense lots of energy in a short period of time, but it also seems to satisfy their urge to work with a person. And that's one of the things that really makes dogs super unique. Nice, I don't think she's not missed a single Frisbee today. Anytime Inertia looks like she wants to take a break or I can tell she's starting to get a little bit winded, I'm happy to let her do so. When she naturally lies down as if to say, okay, I need to take a break, I'll say something like, take a break. So over time, she's really come to learn what take a break means. And of course, depending on weather, I like to start a round of fetch with about four or eight throws, somewhere in between there, and then I'll encourage her to take a break. This is really important. A lot of people will play with their dog like we just have with inertia, and then their dog's like, <sighs> I'm so tired, I need to take a break. And the person then just assumes, well, I guess the exercise is over. But especially with those really energetic dogs, it takes just a few minutes for them to recharge and be ready for another round. So if you're really trying to give your dog a super satisfying workout, the real trick is to do multiple rounds of fetch with short breaks in between. Usually, I like to give a dog about five to 10 minutes between rounds to give them a nice long break. 
But it's important to also keep in mind that there's a big difference between your dog getting tired or getting winded or just getting bored. And that's something you're gonna have to learn with your own individual dog. For example, if inertia was showing a lack of interest on my third throw of the day, I would know she's likely not getting tired yet, but more likely interested in other things. So I've had to make things more exciting for her in order to build her interest in the game. And if you've been keeping up with this series, you'll know I've been dealing with exactly that issue virtually the entire time that I've had inertia, but she's really starting to break through in recent months. By the way, here's a pro tip. Pick your home base when you're playing fetch with them in a shady spot. Most dogs naturally seek out shade when they want to take a break, so the shade works kind of like a magnet to encourage your dog to lie down in the right place. Remember, every dog is different in terms of how much exercise they'll need, but in Inertia's case, I'll typically do 20 to 40 minutes of cumulative exercise with five to 10 minute breaks in between. In addition to exercise, there are still a lot of things we need to know to train our dogs and get them to listen to us. I really detail virtually everything you would ever want to know about dog training in my books. I'll have links below. Looks like she's recharged up. So let me show you what else we can do. Come around. You might have noticed that I have inertia come around like that. I get asked about that a lot. The reason I do that is because I want inertia running in a straight line, making as few turns or unnecessary movements as possible. Just as a review to teach this, you know, get them really into the toy, teach them to come around and go. And one of the benefits to playing in a field like this is that your dog gets in the habit of running away from you at full speed and then immediately coming back to you. That's a really good thing for them to practice. They also get used to listening to you at more vast distances, which can be very valuable in the real world when you need to get control of your dog or get them to come back to you in certain situations like that. You have the benefit of getting them to listen to you while they're in this really feel good mindset of playing and it's really likely to excel your your results in training in general. Also, just by nature of practicing in public places like this, you're gonna have organic distractions at usually pretty low levels. For example, we've got some people over here playing some catch. And she's having to pay attention to me with that going on in the background. So it really allows you to phase in these moderate distractions while they're kind of far away so that your dog starts to get used to listening to you in a variety of situations. So I embrace it when we have distractions like this. You add to that that she's in a fatigued state, therefore she's more likely to listen to me. Therefore, the training is much more likely to stick. You can see that heavy pant right there. That's what I like to see. No need to push her beyond a few throws. So let's go take a break, come on. If your dog has not yet learned a reliable game of fetch or they're just generally unreliable on their training, as many hyperactive dogs are, because it can be tough to get through to them in an unexercised state, then make sure you're using a long lead so that you can easily manage them. Now, throughout the series, I've shown you how I've used a long lead and how I'm phasing it into off-leash training with inertia. We've been working for the last 15 months or so towards playing fetch off-lead. You wouldn't just start by playing off-leash like this until your dog is reliable, but that's the wonderful thing about this series, isn't it? You can actually go back and see how we taught every little thing. Just to get inertia playing fetch like you're seeing here today has taken a lot of time and patience. It's been more challenging to train inertia how to do this basic skill than it has for some of my other dogs in the past. But again, that's the beauty. Every dog is completely unique. And of course, inertia has skills that some of my other dogs in the past didn't have as well. For example, I've never had a dog before that could do a somersault. It's true that a lot of dogs, especially Border Collies, are known to take to playing fetch relatively easily, but there are always exceptions like with inertia. So keep in mind with many dogs, fetch is not the most natural thing for them, even if that is their breed and what they're supposed to be able to do. Fetch can be an acquired taste to many dogs. One great thing about this series is that I have the entire process of training inertia completely documented for you guys. Like we literally have the first time she ever caught a Frisbee on video and that was an amazing moment for us. Inertia, more than any dog I have ever had, really struggled with getting hooked on the game of fetch. She might show interest here and there, but it wasn't completely reliable, and it wasn't her favorite thing on earth to do. But I really felt that if I just kept working with her that I could really get her to like this game, and so far it's succeeding. Whoa, I think that counts. I think that, yeah, that was a catch. First catch, awesome. <sighs> That's so good. I was really, really hoping we would get her first catch on camera, and we did. Bottom line, if you really commit to teaching your dog this fluid, polished game of fetch, and you're giving them breaks and sufficient rounds, you should find that virtually any dog is gonna be the best behaved dog on Earth.
Get $10 off your first three automatic shipments from PetFlow. I'll have a link in details in the description below. Subscribe to my channel, follow us on Instagram too, and get a copy of both of my books that have everything you need to know to train your dog in one place. See you guys next time.